video walkthrough on Coleman. We'll start in the back. We are pre-wired for a backup camera. Uh, this does not come with a backup camera, but that's something we can get installed if you'd like to have one on there. And then it does use power from your marker lights up there, so the running lights on your tow vehicle need to be on for the camera to be operational. You got an outdoor shower. We use the term shower loosely because it's kind of hard to shower out here, but you can pick this up and maneuver it. You do have hot and cold out here, and then it just wraps up in there, closes up nice. Hard to do one-handed, so we'll make sure that gets put away before you guys take this. Bumper caps come off. That's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. Um, and that's what it's meant for. That'll keep it up and out of the way of anywhere, uh, like in your compartments, out of uh, stuff you want to keep clean. Shore cord. Um, no way you can lose it because it's built into the unit. All you got to do is shove it in when you're done. Then you can close this like that to keep it neat. It's 30 amp. Cable inlet. In case we, wherever you're going provides cable, you can hook up cable through there. And then you should be good to go. I'm running off a of cable. Not a lot of places still provide cable, but if you have this parked at home and you have a way to bring cable out, that you can do that too. City water connection. Um, if you got a site with water or you're at home, you hook up water through here. You won't need to run your pump. You operate off of city water pressure. Got your sewer out here. So your gray handle is your gray tank. Your gray tank is like your shower and your sink water. Your black tank is your toilet water. I always make sure these are all the way closed before I take the cap off, and then I dump black tank first, so I get my hose hooked up, dump black, let that get all the way empty. Once it's all the way empty, then I dump gray tank, and what that'll do is that'll flush out that hose, so when you pick it up to move it to put it in your bumper, you don't have to uh, have any of that black tank water drip on you. Side seals, every once in a while, you're all going to want to inspect them, make sure they're not dry or cracked or anything like that. If you start to notice they are doing that, I recommend um, taking it in for a side-out maintenance. You could do it yourself, or you could buy the necessary materials to do a slide out maintenance. That also entails lubricating the rails up with uh, dry lube, meant for a slide out. Moving along. You got stabilizer jacks like this, both front and back. So that slot right there is gonna be where you stick your manual backup crank. And you do have another crank over there. That's your manual backup for your power tongue jack. They do have nice pass-through storage in here. Right here, it's a lot of good information here. This will have your VIN on it, your unloaded vehicle weight. So this trailer weighs as it sits, uh, 6,094 pounds. Um, tire pressure, 65 PSI. That's what you want to go off of, not what's printed on your tire. And then other good information, cargo carrying capacity. So you can, 965 pounds is how much you can carry um, cargo. Full fresh water and full gray and black tanks are included in cargo, so um, subtract the uh, these numbers from that and you get your cargo carrying capacity. Right up here, Group 24 RV Marine Gray Battery. It's brand new. We never keep units on a lot with, with batteries in them. I recommend taking it out in the winter, keeping it out of the cold so it doesn't uh, you know, get ruined, lose its charge. And it's going to be a long time between trips. I definitely recommend disconnecting the negative lead off your battery. That's going to keep anything from using your battery when you're not there. Dual 20 pound cylinders. They are full. So, and you have your automatic changer regulator right here. So it tells you which one it's going to pull from. So it even says you can kind of see it. Supply. So it's pulling from this tank first. If you were to have both on, it'll, if this tank were to get depleted, a little diaphragm will open up in here and it'll switch to pulling off of this tank, um, which is nice. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is this doesn't automatically rotate, indicating it has switched what unit it's pulling off, what tank it's pulling from. So keep that in the back of your mind. And then some people put it in the middle thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally. It doesn't work that way. It's one or the other. Got your seven-way here. This is what will plug into the back of your truck. That's what's going to operate your brakes and your lights and all that. Um, your truck will need a brake controller to actually have the brakes function. Then you have a breakaway here. That gets hooked to that box right there. This will get hooked up with your hitch too, with all your trailer. And if you're towing it down the road and it would have come undone from your truck, it'll pull the little pin out of the box, lock up the brakes on the trailer, 
keep it from rolling into traffic, keep it from slamming into the back end of you. Got a power tongue jack with a light. Then it's raise and lower. Beats hand cranking every day of the week. And you do have a spot for that small little crank for backup. And then we'll make sure this gets put back in its place. The side of that storage, here's that crank I was telling you guys about. Right here, you are partially wired, partially set up for a solar panel. Um, that's just solar charge, it'll just trickle charge your onboard battery. You'll have to buy the Furion kit, which comes with the solar panel and all that stuff you need to get plugged into here. And like I said, that's just going to trickle charge your battery for you. Controls for your jacks. So this one will do this front one, the one in the back will do the rear ones. Hit extend. One will go, it'll get close to touching. Touch down, and when you see it do that, just, just flip it over. There you go, it should fix itself. Sometimes you have to give it a little encouragement. There you go. Since they're so new, the more you use them, the more. There you go. Now these are stabilizer jacks. These are not leveling jacks. Do not try to pick the front end of this camper up to get it level. Do not try to use the back to raise the back up to get it level. It's, they're just stabilizer jacks. Um, if you try to pick it up, you will trip the resettable the self resetting breaker and you have to wait a few seconds before it to activate for it to reset if you want your trailer to be level use your tongue jack to get front to back and then if you want side to side backing onto some blocks underneath your tires on your low on the low side to get it level and then run these jacks down get them snug on the ground that'll get all the shake and shimmy out it that'll stabilize it Right here, your awning is adjustable. You can see that, pull down to adjust pitch, so you grab the large part, pull it down, just like that. And you can have water pitch off to the corner, rather than if it's raining all the way along down the edge. Now if it starts raining real bad, roll your awning up. If it's heavy rain and winds, you don't want to bend one of these arms or tear your fabric. So if you roll it in during a rainstorm, since you rolled it in wet, as soon as it gets sunny and dry out, roll it back out. Let the sun dry it out before you roll it back in again. Because if it holds moisture in there, you're going to get streaks all over it and it's going to get smelly. Outdoor GFCI. All your GFCI outlets are on the same circuit. So if one's going to trip, they're all going to trip. Fresh water fill. So you're going to fill your onboard fresh tank. If you're going somewhere that doesn't provide water or you don't have anywhere to hook up water, sorry. just rest your hose in there. Unscrew that just a little bit. Rest it in there. Don't jam it in there. It's gravity fill. You don't want to pressurize the tank. Um, and then fill it. If you start seeing water squirt around from your hose, you're full. But I generally don't recommend letting it get to that point. Monitor its progress on the monitoring panel inside. As soon as it reads full, come back out, turn your hose off. And then I recommend draining it after every trip um, because you don't want water to sit in there. If you only used half of it and it's still half full, that water will become stagnant and smelly. So right over there, that valve right there, that's your valve to drain your fresh tank. Water heater, super simple to use. Got your plug right here. This threads into right here. Get it threaded as much as you can by hand. Once it's threaded, tighten it down. Um, it's 15 sixteenths is the socket size for this. Um, it might actually be 7 8 7 eighths or 15 sixteenths. Usually it's 15 sixteenths. Get it in there, snug it down, don't over tighten it. It is plastic, you don't want to strip the threads out. 
Once it's tightened, you, as soon as you hook up water to it, it'll start filling and then you'll be able to go to turn it on. Now, like your fresh water tank, your water heater, I'd recommend draining after every trip. So if you used it for a whole week and you're not gonna go again for another month, drain the water out of there. Again, it'll get stagnant if it sits. But before you pull your plug to drain it, open up your pressure relief. Water will squirt out, that's fine. Everything out here is designed to get wet. Snap it closed once it's done squirting out. Then you can take your plug out. If you neglect to do that first, you're gonna get a bath. And if you've been running it, you're gonna get a hot bath. And sometimes there's even enough pressure out. If you get this to a point, it'll shoot it out and you might lose it in the grass or in the neighbor's campsite somewhere. So just keep that in mind. You wanna relieve that pressure first. Other than that, you wanna clean in here and in there quite regularly. Um, if you don't clean in there, if you neglect to clean in there, you'll see soot build up here and here and it might even get bad and get on the side of the camper. And if it, get really, if it gets really bad, if you neglect it for like three, four years, um, it might catch fire. And if the fire hits this little thermal fuse here, your AC won't turn on again until that gets uh, fixed. So just keep that in mind. Regular cleaning keeps it running a long time. I recommend cleaning it, uh, let's say, once every quarter, so four times, four times a year. Same with your fridge, clean up in here. I even recommend taking this panel off sometimes and cleaning all the dust back there, cleaning out the, the area where the burner is and the cooling unit, keeping that clean, keeping it dust free. Similar deal with your furnace, just clean out of here. If you see anything in there that you can pick out, pick it out. Don't use air to blow anything. You might just blow it deeper in there. So just be careful with that. They do make screens for these. They don't recommend you run them with the screen on just because it restricts airflow. But that's, the screens are perfect for traveling, keeps road debris out of there, or storage keeps insects from building nests or spider webs or anything in there. So that's good for that. Then you do have a black tank flush. You can stick a hose into here as you're dumping your black tank. Turn that hose on. There's a little nozzle in the black tank, and that'll flush it out, keep it smelling nice and good for you um, so the residue doesn't stick on the walls. And sometimes when the residue is stuck on the walls of the tank, um, it'll give you false readings. It'll say it's two-thirds even though it's completely empty. And then, last bit on the outside, appliance-wise, extend and retract, that's the rear jacks. And then two more things, all your sealant on all the fixtures around everything is warrantied through us, through Camping World, for 90 days. After that, it's on your folks to uh, take care of that. I recommend every 90 days at home going around and looking at it. If you see a gap, get a tube of clear silicone and a caulk gun, you're out for less than 20 bucks and you go around and just touch up any gaps. Because a gap this big, go through a few winters, it'll be this big and bigger and bigger until you have water damage, and that's just no fun to repair. Now last, your roof, there is no ladder, so it's not a walkable roof. Um, you can get up there, do spread your weight out evenly, sit, kneel, crouch. Um, if you have like a big foam pad you can sit on there, that's good, that's gonna spread your weight out. What you're looking for is um, cracks in any of the ceiling around the fixtures or any tears in the roof membrane. Um, if you see anything, take a picture of it. Um, if you take it in for work, keep your receipts, keep copies of, make copies of everything and keep it in a little manila, manila, manila folder inside your camper. That way if you, if you notice during, during one of your routine roof checkups that you see a split, you take it in <coughs> and, and the roof can't, the warranty department for the roof can't deny your claim because you have proof of all this regular maintenance. So we'll come on under the inside right now. We'll start right to the left. So you can read how full your battery is, how charged it is. It's always gonna read full when you're plugged in, so keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And you have fresh, black, and gray. You do not have a second gray tank. They use these panels throughout all the different Coleman's. A lot of them do have a second gray tank. This one does not. And you have controls for awning, extend, and retract. So we can retract it. Your awning does not automatically retract during a windy day, and nor does it stop stop automatically when you're extending it. So keep that in mind. Then you have your controls for your water heater on gas. So when you are running on gas, it will cycle. The burner will cycle on and off to help regulate that that set te that pre-programmed um, set temperature it's on. So just keep that in mind. If you're if you if you're just going around and you hit kick back on, that's fine. You hit kick off, that's fine. It's meant to do that. And you have controls for your water pump if you're pulling from your onboard fresh tank. Exterior lights do these 
LED lights under the awning. And then interior lights, we'll just do these main six lights. And here all the other lights will be turned on and off at the fixtures themselves. And then you have your controls for your slide out. Huh. Very simple, in and out, watch what's behind you, watch what you have on the floors. Um, even a little bit of dirt, some, some slightly large pebbles on the ground is enough to gouge the floor when you operate your slide up. So keep it clean over there. There's a little rug. Bedroom, not a whole heck of a lot to really cover in here. One of them clicky lights, you just click it on and off in the center. You have two USB ports and an outlet over there, and then two USB ports and an outlet over there. And then both of these doors operate by unbutton them. You just slide the door. Super simple. Always remember, snap it closed when you travel. If you neglect to do that and you, you come in one day and you see marks and sometimes they even dent these walls on the on the from the door and you realize you forgot you unbuttoned it or forgot to button it that is uh, an unwarrantable issue that would be con considered customer damage so always button those up now if this were to fail and you knew you buttoned it that's a different story spot for a tv mounting back there's a backer right here so you can mount your tv there and you have power cable outlet watch if what mount you buy the screws that come with a mount are usually too long and you'll poke a hole through the outside of the camper again those two outlets right there and then all of these shades except the one in the kitchen operate just by pushing and pulling the longer ones definitely recommend using two hands to push and pull up because as you pull it from the center on the long ones it'll start to form an arch and be diff difficult to operate Spot for TV out here, outlets, cable outlet. One of these is for Wi-Fi power. If you're gonna have the, the um, WineGuard uh, Wi-Fi extender installed on the roof, it doesn't have it, but it's, it's kind of set up for one of those. Hook your cable coax through there from your TV. And then if you're gonna use your antenna, turn that on, that's your booster for your antenna. If you're using cable, turn it off. Right here, so this, this is 30 amp. You can use your AC or your fireplace. You can use them both at the same time. So choose one or the other. Right here, remote for the radio. So you can turn it on from here. Oh, so what? we were on, we were just volume was really low. You have different zones. Zone one is inside. So it'll just do outside. Zone 2 is outside, so you can just do inside, or you can do both, or neither. Well, well, neither would be like that. There you go. You have presets here, 1 through 6. Push and hold to save a preset. Then you have play, pause, stop, um, next track, previous track, or you can go through your radio channels that way there. Then you have Bluetooth right here. Push, and push that. Look for Furion DV3050 SB on your phone. Um, it might ask for a pin. It's usually going to be all zeros or all ones. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four. And then this button will allow you to cycle through all the other modes. You do have an auxiliary. Do you have a headphone jack? There is a USB port too. Below that, you do have a fireplace. There should be. There should be. Hold on. Here's your blue bag. I'm gonna put you, just put it down for just a second. Slightly off topic, but in here you got a complimentary cleaner for your black tank. You just pour that on your toilet, and then all your manuals are in here. What I was looking for was come over here. You got your thermostat. The first thing it'll ask is your fan mode, auto, high, 
low, I recommend auto. It's going to allow your uh, allow it to cycle on and off to, to, to keep the set temperature. So you have it set to like 60. Once it reaches 60, your AC will shut off. And then once it starts to kind of get warmer in here, it'll turn back on to help you regulate that temperature. If you just had it running on high, set to 60, your AC is just going to keep running no matter what. That's why I recommend auto. If you run it too much, it'll freeze up, shut down, and it won't. It will. It will short cycle, and it won't kick back on until um, it's thawed out. Hit it again. Goes to furnace. Your first furnace goes all the way to 90, and then your AC goes down to 55, which is pretty cold, but it, it, it's nice. Right here, breaker box. All your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. All your fuses for your 12 volt. You got 15s and 240s. Recommend keeping some fuses with you. Bunks, dual USB ports there, up top and bottom, and then lights for everybody. This dinette table turns into bed. You just lift the table up, pop them legs out, set them aside. The table will sit on these little black bumpers. Then you take these rear cushions, lay them on the table, and you can create a platform to sleep on. This turns into a bed as well. Grab up underneath, pivot out like that. Nice spot to sleep on. Lift it up. Pivot it forward. Got your couch, and then I do believe. Nope. Oh, oh, yes. Fold down. Cup holder is pretty nice. Bathroom. Not a whole heck of a lot going on here. You do have a crank up right here. Crank up the vent. Turn on the fan. Recommend doing that when you take showers. That's going to take the moisture out of the air. Keep condensation from building on these walls. Very simple to use, got hot and cold when you when you wanted to devote it to your shower head, lift up here. Toilet, super simple. As long as you're pushing this pedal, it's just gonna keep flushing. So just once you're confident, flush everything down and then let off. Here's your reset up on GFCI. So any outlet with this sticker on, if it suddenly stops working, come into the bathroom, look to see if it's been tripped, and then you come and reset it in here. And then you do have your light switch for the lights in the bathroom. Alright, well. That pretty much concludes your uh, little video tour of your Coleman. I hope you guys, hope this video was really informative for you guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoy getting a lot of good use out of this camper. And goodbye.